Good morning and welcome to the 2017 STAR Community Summit. We looked at health, mental health, and substance use as a critical area of concentration for this year. It's also one of the buzz topics in our nation's capital, believe it or not. This is a, a very uh, uh, serious issue as it relates to access to health care for all citizens, but in particular for our most vulnerable population, those folks who we serve every day, those returning citizens, ex-offenders, clients, however you may phrase it. So today I wanted to welcome you all, and I also wanted to um, be the first to say uh, farewell and thank you uh, to Nancy McCarthy, uh, who started STAR uh, a couple of years ago. Now, therefore, Francis G. Slay, Mayor of the City of St. Louis, dear hereby proclaim March 31st, 2017, as Nancy McCarthy Day. Okay, nationally, um, we have about 1.8 million people had an opioid use disorder um, related to prescriptions, and then 517 related to heroin use. That's gone up. Those are two years old. Those are the most recent data. Those have definitely gone up. But again, this is coming home to St. Louis. Our deaths for opioids have surpassed our homicide rate, right? This is, a, I mean, I can't even put into words how big of an issue this is. Again, if someone presents with you with heroin use, we have to look backwards. Why are they presenting to you with heroin use? What are those issues? The issue is probably trauma. The issue is probably mental health. The issue is probably, probably poverty. There's going to be something that came before that heroin use. I mean, we could throw out statistics all day about uh, African American incarceration and the trauma and the PTSD and the perpetual uh, stress and toxic stress that uh, is a result of that. And as, as Dr. Huebner explained, uh, there's been tons of research from Sake of All, Alive and Well, and uh, Regional Health Commission, uh, all doing fantastic jobs of acknowledging the toxic stress in our local communities. So we just want to equip law enforcement officers with the, the ability when they encounter someone in the street to look at their behavior and determine is their behavior a result of criminal intent? If it's a result of criminal intent, then those are the individuals that we want to take to jail. If their behavior is a result of some underlying behavioral health issue, then we want to, we, we, we realize that we're, we better serve the community by addressing that underlying behavioral health issue and getting them connected to the appropriate services and ideally divert them from the criminal justice system. You know, we were at first just releasing people out the door, tell them, look, you've got an appointment in two days, you've got an appointment in a week. Not good enough. Uh, it, it, we can lose people that fast, as I'm sure is no surprise to you. So we changed it around, learned from it, pivoted from it. And now either we deliver the persons directly and drop them off at the agency, or the agency comes out often, see what we have these, picks them up from the jail, takes them to the agency. And that has changed it around. It, it's now the success rate is, is even a lot better because of that warm handoff. So it is important for us to understand that oftentimes when that person is entering the correctional system, they have already had a life full of traumatic experiences. And then when we compare African-Americans income, median income in the county, it's almost 36,000 a year. But for whites, it's almost 66,000. That's disparity. That's injustice. And in that space, of where people are living with disadvantage comes trauma. We also know certain types of work carry greater stress than others. So work in mental health, social services, justice systems, particularly work with traumatized populations is more stressful than the normal work stress because you're hearing about things that are sometimes man-made, man facilitated, lead us to feel threatened, to worry about our physical health and well-being as well as our mental health and well-being. 